This question deals with a 68 year old man comes to the physician because of one month history of fatigue and pelvic pain that is exacerbated by movement and weight bearing activities. Vital signs are normal. Physical exam shows pale conjunctiva. There is mild pain on direct palpation of the pelvis. Lab studies show normal chromic normocytic anemia and increased serum calcium and bilirubin concentrations. A peripheral blood smear shows evidence of rouleau formation. An X-ray of the pelvis shows osteolytic bone lesions. A bone scan shows no abnormalities. Which of the following is a most likely diagnosis? So let's talk about this. So this patient is 68 year old. He, we can see that he has pelvis shows osteolytic bone lesions. So osteolytic bone lesions plus a rouleau, this is pretty sure that this is multiple myeloma. And everything else kind of matches our story. He's anemic because he, uh, more of his bone marrow is making plasma cells rather than making other different kinds of cells. There is increased serum and bilirubin concentrations because there is more breakdown of bone in the pelvis. And again, he has pain while um, doing weight-bearing activities, okay? So this pretty much points towards uh, multiple myeloma. But let's talk about how we can get confused if there is some other information which kind of looks like multiple myeloma, but it really isn't, okay? So let's talk about some other things that we see in multiple myeloma. First of all, I want to show you a picture of the rouleau formation. What does it really look like? So in this particular picture, we can see that they are basically kind of stacking on top of each other. This is a typical example of the low formation. Okay. Now, what are some of the other things that we see with uh, multiple myeloma? We see that there is an M spike, right? We see an M. Sorry about that. Um, we see an M spike. An M spike in multiple myeloma is usually caused by an IgG or IgA. It's not all immunoglobulins. Uh, multiple myeloma is a monoclonal gammopathy, right? One clone is made in lots of great amounts. So we're going to see either IgG or IgA, but the point is it's usually IgG or IgA, okay? Where we're talking about Waldenstrom macroglobulinemia, we're usually going to have the M spike is usually going to be due to an IgM. So both of them, you might get confused. Don't jump to multiple myeloma as soon as you see Ig, uh, M spike. M spike due to IgG or IgA would be multiple myeloma. Usually, M spike due to IgM will be Walder, Waldenstrom macroglobulinemia. Okay. Um, another thing we're going to see in um, multiple myeloma is we're going to see that plasma cells has a clock face chromatin okay it's going to look like a clock and this is exactly how it's going to look like in histology let me see if i can find a picture to uh, match my um, my histology so as you can see in this particular picture this is a clock face chromatin right that one and you can see that you can kind of see a little bit of clock formation here so these are clock face chromatin that we see in multiple myeloma. Also keep in mind that other things about multiple myeloma is that it's going to cause a hyperviscosity uh, syndrome. Okay, uh, there, It's going to make you susceptible to infections because your white blood count is going to be going down because there's too much plasma cells. Um, and an infection is a polyclonal gammopathy because all the immunoglobulins are increased. But multiple myeloma is a monoclonal gammopathy. So anyways, um, in this particular question, the answer is going to be multiple myeloma because there is enough evidence in from the question stem that we understand that this is multiple myeloma.